Hello everyone, and uh, today we're going to be taking a look at a new mod that uh, just got um, an alpha release. So this is The Great Conflicts, and this mod has been in development for quite a while. And um, I actually did not know it was still in development um, until recently. Let me make sure my options are okay here. Um, but uh, in any case, uh, this mod is pretty cool because uh, it it kind of it, it covers uh, a time period that is not really covered very well in uh, Total War and also a geographic area that's not covered uh, very well either. So um, in any case, let's uh, take a look at the campaign here. So you can see you have, uh, f you know, fewer factions uh, to choose from than a lot of other mods, but I think this is c this can be a good thing. So you've got the Lombard Kingdom in Italy. Uh, you've got the Bulgarian Empire. Uh, you've got, uh, and the Bulgarians are quite strong, you can see at this point. Uh, you've got the Abbasid Caliphate. You've got the Serbian Principality. You've got the Moravian Empire. You've got the Roman Empire, which uh, it looks like uh, one of the most interesting campaigns here. Um, because look at look at the territories you control. So you've got major issues with the Bulgarians. Uh, you've got uh, the Paulician revolt that's going on in Armenia. You've got, uh, yeah, you've got a whole load of problems. Look at the situation in Italy. And of course the Abbasids. And you've got the Kievan Rus. And you've got the Emirate of Chandak. So uh, these guys are in Crete. And uh, that's going to be a problem for uh, the Byzantines as well. You've got the Aghlabid Emirate that rules uh, Tunisia and uh, most of Sicily. You've got the Tulunid Emirate, which is in Egypt. You've got the Duchy of Croatia. You've got the Hungarians, the Magyar Confederacy. And you've got the Eastern Frankish Empire which is another interesting faction. So, yeah, this mod, uh, I really have to say, and it starts in 872 and ends in uh, 1071, so right, the Battle of Manzikert. So it's a really interesting period of time that uh, Total War really hasn't covered that much, and this geographic region in that period of time, it really hasn't been covered. So uh, let's um, show off some gameplay here. I guess, you know, the Byzantines would be cool uh, because look at that. That'll give us a look at quite a bit of the map. So you know what? I might just go with that. I'll go with the Byzantines uh, for this one just, just to show off uh, the campaign and perhaps some of the scripts. But yeah, I'm really glad that uh, this mod, The Great Conflicts, has been uh, released in an alpha state. So just like uh, Tsardoms, of course, um, there's a lot of parallels there because uh, Tsardoms was in development for quite a while and just got a beta release. Um, I know I said I was going to do a nice Albanian playthrough because the Albanians were just added in the new version of Tsardoms, but I just haven't had the chance yet. Uh, but this mod, like Tsardoms, has a lot of historical scripts in the campaign. So uh, only choose one faction. Oh, sorry about that. All right, so actually uh, what happened was I accidentally chose a whole bunch of factions because I was showing off the factions, right? So um, I'm mad at the Byzantines now. I actually I accidentally chose multiple factions. 
So I'll, I'll just go with the Lombards. But I actually like the Lombard start position as a kind of um, tutorial for this campaign because uh, you start off with a small kingdom in uh, Italy and it's you're relatively safe. I mean, you have uh, Byzantine problems, but you're surrounded by um, some smaller kingdoms, rebel kingdoms. Uh, you've got just a couple of Roman uh, Byzantine uh, cities nearby. But uh, other than that, you're safer than the other factions. Welcome to the Great Conflicts. The game begins in the year 827 AD and utilizes a seasonal turn system. There are four turns per year, three summer and one winter, just like in real life, and characters age one year each cycle. Okay. So yeah, one, one change in the Great Conflicts I like is that all settlements are now cities. I don't really like the division between castles and cities. I don't think it made much sense in the way that the system was implemented in Medieval 2. It just wasn't my favorite. Um, but in any case, uh, yeah, the Great Conflicts, just like Tsardom's, is pretty... Uh, generals are important. Um, yes. Which campaign AI? Uh, I'm just showcasing the campaign. Um, so, but... Uh, this just uh, goes to show you how much you can customize your experience in the Great Conflicts, which I think is cool, because some people prefer the more aggressive AI, some people prefer the more balanced AI, um, stronger rebels. Uh, let's go with the weaker rebels for now. Uh, but in any case, I have to say, let's uh, take a look at the map here. I really like the look of this map. It's a little bit more skewed. So like Italy looks to be at a more extreme angle, right? Uh, and a, a lot of it looks to be at a more extreme angle uh, than it should be. But I think that that was necessary to kind of fit in all the parts of the map they wanted to. But just purely um, in terms of aesthetics, uh, it's a little bit skewed, a little bit odd. Uh, so in any case, you can see our small little Lombard kingdom here at Benevento. Oh, the expansion of Benevento. The noble council recommends the conquest of one of our neighboring cities to demonstrate our superiority. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we've got a couple of settlements here. We've got um, Benevento. We've got Alife, Lombard minor settlement. And we've got Avalino, another minor settlement. So these... Uh, settlements are actually, you know, you cannot construct anything in them, right? So they are truly minor settlements, whereas in Benevento is a major settlement. And of course, all the buildings, not all the buildings, but most of the buildings are brand new and um, have a new UI. So some of the uh, UI, you can tell that it's not quite done yet, so these buildings have the new UI. And uh, I highly believe that they are going to uh, change the UI for the buildings that still have the standard Medieval 2 UI, like the port, uh, the brothel, the town hall, and the artist studio, uh, just to make things look more consistent. Um, but you can also see uh, wine, let's take a drink. I I don't know. Uh, but you can see... Oh, one. That's supposed to be one. Okay. Uh, but in any case, uh, yeah, there are a lot of new buildings. Uh, everything it is a little more expensive, so things don't take as long as some mods like uh, Europa Barbarorum 2 or uh, Tsardom's. But... Um, they are still expensive, so it is quite tough, and you don't start off with too much money there. And of course, our economic situation is not great, so you've got to take your army and go. Go fight, um, Amalfi, 
or Naples. So I'd be down to go and take uh, Naples now, actually. But I want to take a quick look at the rest of the map. So I have to say I do like the ground textures and the trees in the Great Conflict. So the campaign map looks nice. It's just a little bit skewed, not quite as aesthetically pleasing as um, uh, Tardums, for example. I, I still think Tardums looks like the nicest um, map. In, um, it's the nicest campaign map in Medieval 2 I've seen. Um, but in any case, uh, you can see uh, that in the west here, uh, we've got uh, Corsica and Sardinia, and we've got the Aglabids in Sicily and in North Africa. And the Romans still have Syracuse in uh, Sicily, but that doesn't look like a very safe uh, position. So you've got the Papal States. And again, you have a new uh, city models for the campaign map. I really like this. I think it adds a lot of flavor to the campaign. So just like in Sardom's, uh, you can you see those unique uh, campaign city models on the campaign map. I really like that. I wish Pisa got one. Uh, Milan doesn't have one here. But of course, the time period is totally different. So um, in Sardom's, yeah, the Italian cities look a lot cooler, I have to say. So in the north, of course, we've got the Eastern Franks. Um, they look like they're, they're in a very good position. It looks like they are the kind of easy mode kind of faction here. Or at least easier than others. I'm not going to say it's an easy experience. Because uh, as you can see, the Great Conflicts is a tough mod. And everything is very well designed. Uh, so you've got the Croatians there. Uh, you've got the Moravians. Yeah, the Moravians up in the north there. And you've got the Bulgarians who have a huge empire right um, in the middle of the action there. So that looks like an action-packed campaign. Tough to control. Uh, you've got the Serbians who don't have a very catchy, eye-catching color here, so the Serbians are kind of grayish, so you can actually mistake them for a re rebel province there. And then you've got the Romans who are in a horrible position, uh, way too spread out. Uh, you've got uh, rebels in uh, the east there. Um, Kilikia is under control of the Abbasids, as well as Antioch, so you've got your work cut out for you in the east there. And you've got the Abbasid Caliphate, of course, in the east, controlling uh, part of Kilikia, not all of it. And um, uh, Antioch, uh, Damascus, and uh, quite a bit of the Near East there. And, of course, you've got the um, Tulunids, who control Egypt. And, of course, uh, the Chandax um, faction here. So these guys look like a very interesting faction, and they look like they could be a pain for uh, the Byzantines. And, of course, way up in the north, uh, we've got um, the Magyars as well as uh, Roman-controlled Kersonesos and uh, the Kievans up north there. So as the Kievans, of course, you want to go down and take Constantinople, which also has a unique uh, city model here, so that's nice to see. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, that was a good amount of the map shown there. Um, in any case, uh, we've got to go and uh, fight fight a battle. Let's show off some of the units here. I have to say, aesthetically, it's a little darker. I don't quite like the building icons. Uh, they're not my favorite. I wonder if they're going to be changed, um, if they're not fi not final. Uh, but in any case, let's uh, leave some... 
levy troops in that minor settlement there. And let's uh, get ready to try and take um, Naples from the Neapolitans. Or we could go for Salerno. You know what? Let's go for Salerno. Why not? But you can see the Lombard roster is a little bit... I, I do like these icons uh, better than the other ones. They're kind of cool. Uh, they're unique. Uh, I have to say, the Lombard roster looks a little bit limited. Uh, but that's normal. So you've got uh, these swordsmen, the heavier swordsmen. So, of course, factions like the Byzantines. And, um, of course, there's an AOR system here, so... Like the Byzantines in the eastern part of the empire are going to be able to recruit different types of units. The Byzantines in Italy are going to recruit different types of units. So, um, you know, standard stuff here. So let's build a... Our economy is not great, so you know what? I might just uh, increase the tax rate and then uh, just keep going. And of course, there are uh, rebel factions that can emerge, I believe, in this mod. So this mod is definitely in the vein of Tardum's in terms of its uh, devotion to historical accuracy. Uh, of course, the map here is um, more expansive than that of uh, Tardum's. So um, I, you could see right there uh, the script at work. So let's uh, besiege Salerno. Lupus. It's never lupus. That's a house reference. But in any case, uh, yeah, let's besiege Salerno. Let's see if we can get a fight going here. Yeah, so the script uh, really did a number on our public order there in Benevento. So you know what? Let's take a drink. And let's uh, get this fight going. But yeah, I think the, the turn times are going to be a bit tough in this mod, at least in the early going as the scripts are um, activating. Um, and of course, some mods like EB, EB2 have long turn times. Uh, Tardum's... Tardum's was not so bad in, in terms of turn times. Um, the ship submod for stainless steel. Um, you know, a lot of people report long turn times with that one, but I didn't have such an issue. It wasn't so bad for me. But of course, uh, lighter mods like regular stainless steel or um, chivalry 2, uh, those mods are going to have faster turn times than a mod like this one. Like the Great Conflicts. Oh, Lando. He's youthful and ignorant. And he has silly beliefs. And he's aloof. Sounds like Lando to me. Oh, the Council wants us to take Naples, huh? Well, whatever. We're going to take Salerno. So let's, um, let's keep it going here. Okay, let's get this party started. So we've got our Dukes against the Salerno Rebels. So I do have to say, turn times in this mod are a bit long, but, um... It's to be expected with a mod this script heavy, especially with big historical scripts, AI scripts, and um, uh, economy scripts like this one. So um, perhaps they can work on optimizing that. So let's quickly uh, take a look at our army here. Let's take a look at the units. So these are the Lombard... 
uh, bodyguard units looking very nice. I have to say, it's got a gritty look, right? The units here, they have a gritty look to them. So let's take a look at uh, these guys. Heavy Cavalry, Lombard Heavy Cavalry. Uh, yeah, I have to say, this mod... You know, there, there are a lot of units uh, that are designed to, like, look really nice and clean, right? But this mod, I think, does a good job of showing off um, the grittiness of units, right? So you have battered shields and the weapons, the armor looks like they look gritty. They've seen combat before. I like these heavy swordsmen looking good. Italian Axemen. I like the shields of the Italian Axemen. They're aesthetically pleasing. So let's uh, have everyone drop their weapons, or their siege weapons. Let's make a battle line here. And let's get our uh, bodyguard cavalry, I suppose, on the left side. And our other cavalry on the right. I have to say, I like the environments as well. Uh, everything and the towns too. I have to say, uh, everything looks quite nice and gritty. It's got a dark feel to it. It really makes Medieval look darker, right? So one of my issues with Medieval 2 is that uh, it doesn't really have that dark atmosphere for me that I'm looking for. Uh, like Medieval 1. Medi I love Medieval 1's dark atmosphere. Um, so this mod really captures that. Even a mod like Tzardom's, I don't think, kind of captures that atmosphere, that dark atmosphere. Um, it doesn't have to, because it's a different time period a little bit, but um, this one, I think it does. And uh, I'm glad to see that. Everything's looking nice, our missile units are firing. The enemy cavalry is uh, charging my bracing infantry. Yeah, that charge uh, left a little bit to be desired there for the enemy. But yeah, combat in this mod, again, is um, slower than other mods. Um, I would say perhaps pretty similar to Tzardom's again. Uh, and again, uh, w when I played Tzardom's, it was kind of similar to uh, EB, EB2 in a lot of ways, in terms of uh, unit speed. And you can definitely see here, uh, there's a little bit of a delay. Things are definitely uh, on the slower side in terms of um, the battles here. So let's uh, flank these um, rebels here. The Protos Pat Patari uh, Principes, or Principis. But I have to say, everything looks very nice. So let's, um, oh, they've got a Conti Stai, huh? So let's get them. Let's charge him with our cavalry. Very nice indeed. Uh, you can see... Yeah, there we go. That's a good view of the battle here. Yeah, I have to say, graphically, I'm really impressed with this mod. Um, it looks different. It has its own kind of feel. I don't know how you feel about this banner. It looks a little, I don't know, something's a little bit off with that. But, um, no, I have to say, it looks unique, 
It looks dark. It captures that medieval one feel I'm always looking for. Um, in medieval era mods, like uh, that's why I like mods like Chivalry so much. Okay, seems like we're doing okay. But yeah, these this heavy cavalry, this heavy cavalry is not going down. So yeah, battles here are slow. I I'm hesitant to say that the battles are slower than uh Tardums because I have not played enough to say. But it definitely seems that way. Okay, so our general's bodyguard is now fighting these pikemen here. Oh, we didn't take a look at the archers. Oh, there's some peltists coming from over there. I was gonna say, why are they firing away from the battle? But yeah... A plain kind of ke uh, peasant sort of archer look there. So let's keep fighting these spearmen. Things are looking okay. Wow, this enemy heavy cavalry is not going down. I have to say, I like the horses. The horses look nice here. And the saddles look very nice as well. Everything looks very nice, I have to say. This mod has a unique kind of color palette. I'm really digging it. It looks cool. So we're doing well up the middle here because we're flanking their infantry. Um, I have to say... It seems like cavalry... Might be a teensy bit overpowered. Uh, but I mean, a lot of mods uh, have that issue. I, d I have to say, after playing um, a lot of Europa Barbarorum 2, I have to say I prefer the battle balance in terms of uh, cavalry. I don't mean the battle speed, because I do think there can be some tweaks made there in EB2, but, but the battle balance in a f open field battle where um, you've got people duking it out and cavalry you can't just charge cavalry into spearmen like right now um, I just had these cavalry kind of walk into battle against these spearmen and they're doing quite well and I don't think that was the intention here in terms of the balance You know, the, uh, in mods like Chivalry, Chivalry 1, and Chivalry 2 to an extent, uh, the battle balance, the battles are faster. Uh, they're slower than vanilla, but they're uh, faster than other mods like Europa Barbarorum 2, and uh, they have a good balance in terms of the morale. It's very realistic in terms of how easy it can be to shatter levy units, and even shattering... Uh, tougher units so that you know casualties are in the route and you have to really protect your own units and really think strategically uh, and this kind of battle philosophy is also seen in other mods like Empire Realism, Napoleon Realism there was a version for Shogun 2 as well that I don't think was updated Shogun Realism Plus Plus it was something like that um, but for example here, like these enemy cavalrymen, they are just not routing. And, um, it's not the battle balance I prefer. But I, I appreciate why they chose such a balance. And I know a lot of people prefer that. So we're doing pretty well here. So let's get our infantry.
let's kind of let's route uh, the rest of these guys. So our infantry that's fighting by the gate is doing extremely well, and now all the enemies are running through them. So I have a feeling this is not going to go well for the enemy. Our general's bodyguards are doing quite well against those spearmen. Okay, so the enemy was finally beaten there. Enemy general fallen, Unolf. So let's get these cavalry uh, to go and uh, flank the enemy. Flank the enemy spearmen over there and uh, chase down these heavy infantrymen that are routing. Um, I do like that uh, archers seem to be more effective here than in mods like EB2. I think they're nerfed a little bit too much in EB2. Um, in Tardums I was okay with the missile balance. Um, here they seem to be a bit stronger. I appreciate that. Okay, so we got him. Very nice. And let's uh, check the battle statistics because uh, people often uh, message me about opening the battle statistics screen. So you can see uh, our infantry were quite effective. Our archers were very effective. Um, everyone was effective. So in any case, I think that's uh, pretty much everything I wanted to show you about um, the Great Conflicts for Medieval 2 Total War. Uh, so yeah, this mod is looking very promising. It's only in an alpha state right now. Uh, so I think there's a lot of optimization and uh, graphical optimizations that um, are still to come. Uh, let's bang a few hits. Oh, so as you can see, uh, the Lombards have a bit of a script here. So we just unified uh, the Lombard duchies. Uh, by conquering Salerno. So as you can see, uh, Capua and Naples joined me uh, due to my decisive victory at Salerno. So I'm uh, quite happy with that. And this, of course, symbolizes the unification of the Lombard duchies and the uh, so, uh, actually, I really like this mechanic because um, now you don't have to grind through provinces. Like, especially if you're fighting historical enemies and, like, winning a decisive battle in a historical uh, sort of setting, then you get a couple other provinces joining you, which would, of course, be historically accurate. They wouldn't just stubbornly fight you if you've defeated their overlord or something or they could accept you as a suzerain more easily. So I really like this. Um, and I have to say, I'm really impressed. I'm really excited to see what the future holds for the great conflicts. And um, yeah, again, this is a period I wish was covered more often by Medieval 2 mods. So anyway, I hope you like, I hope you like the video. Again, this video was brought to you by my great uh, supporters who support the channel as uh, Eastern Infantry and, of course, our Cataphract member, uh, Heath Dion. Uh, so you can support the channel on Patreon as well as uh, by joining as a member on YouTube as well. And that will give you access to our uh, hot seat campaigns uh, that we do uh, with me, 
and a few other people as well as the members, and they're super fun. So I hope, um, I hope to see you in the next video.